become a pro in static equipment design, join our in-depth and professional training. To avail the biggest discounts and explore the various courses, click on the link shared in the description just below the video. Register and check out the different courses to become an expert in static equipment design. Again, now we are going into calculation for the longitudinal set. So the vessel could be considered to have closed ends and contain the fluid under the gauge pressure P. Then the walls of the cylinder will have a longitudinal stress as well as the circumference. Also. Now let's have a look at, if we look at this figure, so there is a cylinder, there is a closed end. So when the pressure will be applied on the closed ends and it is trying to push the closed ends away from each other, then in the length of that vessel there will be a stress or the pull will be generated that pull or that uh, stress is nothing but the longitudinal stress to generate the longitudinal stress the vessel has to be closed and then only the stress will be generated again now the cause of this is the pressure so one splitting force will be generated because of this pressure so this pressure multiplied by the area now on which area this pressure is getting multiplied or are getting applied it's on the cross section area what we can see in this purple color that is pi by 4 into d square on this area this pressure is getting <coughs> acted so the force we have to calculate again pressure multiplied by the area so the pressure multiplied by this cross section area that is pi by 4 d square will give us equation number one which is the splitting force now to resist this there will be a reaction coming from the body so that is giving us the other force which is the reacting force so when this cylinder is going to fail it will be split in the two halves like this and you can see that sigma l that is longitudinal stress will be generated and that will be applied on the cross section of that cylinder where the material is there so how to calculate that cross section area it is pi by 4 od square minus id square or if we are using the mean diameter it will be pi d into d whereas d is the mean diameter again for the simplicity here it is a thin cylinder so mean diameter and inside diameter will remain the same and we are assuming d as the inside diameter so we can say that the area here it is pi d multiplied by the thickness so this area on which this stress is getting acted upon or generated rather pressure is acting and this stress is getting generated so again we are going to equate both these equations let's see what it looks like again the pi will get cancelled one diameter will get cancelled and the equation will appear like this that is sigma l is equal to pd divided by four times of thickness the longitudinal stress sigma l is nothing but pd upon 40 if we compare both these stresses one was the circumferential stress or the hoop stress and another is this longitudinal stress so we can see that from this equation that the hoop stress that is circumferential stress is always having twice the value as that of longitudinal stress the circumferential stress is having twice the value and we if you remember in circumferential stress the vessel was split in two halves along the length so its l seam that is longitudinal seam was under stress because of the circumferential stress hence in pressure vessel cylinder we can say the L seam, that is longitudinal uh, seam, is having twice the stress as compared to the circumferential stress. And hence, it will be always given a, a very high priority and the importance as far as that welding uh, category is concerned. So, it will be categorized as category A, that's what we are going to see. But because of the circumferential stress, that category A or longitudinal seam is under twice the uh, stress, we can say, as compared to the C seam of any cylindrical pressure vessel so this is very important and this will be uh, used many a times in the code uh, while giving the code philosophy or the analogy or using the formula so this is very very important that circumferential stress will cause the longitudinal joint to fail though it uh, appears like uh, in the reverse but it is the way it is because the circumferential stress will fail uh, the longitudinal joint and longitudinal stress will fail the circumferential joint. 
now just for the sake of understanding we also compare this with the thick cylinder so what is the difference between thick and thin cylinder again the three mutually perpendicular stresses are there in thick cylinder the radial stress as we can see over here across the thickness sr that is nothing but the radial stress along the circumference there is a sh that is circumferential stress and along the length there is a stress which is called as a sl that is longitudinal stress but if we look at the hoop stress that is circumferential stress that is not constant across the thickness it is having the maximum value where from the pressure is applied and it is getting reduced till the end and if we compare that with the radial stress it is also not constant throughout the thickness it is having the maximum compressive value that negative term is for the compressive value because of the pressure the inner surface will be under compression because of the radial stress so radial stress is having highest value at the inner face and zero value at the outer face so circumferential stress hoop stress longitudinal and radial stress these are three stresses where the radial stress is having significant value and here we cannot neglect this uh, radial or uh, what we can say uh, radial stress so thick cylinder theory uh, is based upon let's say von mises theory or distortion energy theory where the uh, what we can say the acceptance criteria won't be based upon just the principal stresses there we calculate the equivalent stress so it will take care of all these three stresses which will be developed so it will be a combination of these three stresses and then we'll reach to equivalent stress and that stress will compare with the allowable stress unlike in principal stress theory we individually calculate the stresses and out of the stresses whichever is the maximum that's supposed to be less than the allowable so that is the basic difference so friends you must have enjoyed this technical video those who want to have in depth knowledge on the subject pressure vessel design heat exchanger design pv lead software training they can opt for our training courses for which you have to contact us on our whatsapp number 9921229232 9921229232 for more such technical videos download our android and ios app download link is provided in the description below to know more about training and how to use app watch our demo video link for which is also provided in the description don't forget to subscribe our youtube channel express engineering training services on youtube and also don't forget to hit the bell icon happy learning see you